Hello everyone, it's the uh, it's the 10th of June today and uh, I've been working on some of the procedural pattern stuff still. Today we also released the Blender 3.2 update feature video on the main channel so give that a watch if you haven't already. But uh, let's take a look at what's been going on today. So we've got one more node group come through from Charon which was for the animated raindrop effects here. So if I play the timeline it's a bit fast but if I just scrub through the frames here you'll be able to see the raindrops as they fall down the surface. So let's uh, go to the right nodes here. We have the rain node here and you've got like a rain shader output You've got the mask and then the base roughness. You can combine this with shaders in any way you like. At the moment, it's just the roughness for a principled shader. That's becoming the output. But, you know, you can use pretty much anything and we could pass that through the uh, whoops, through the base color as well. Just making it very messy at the moment. So here we go. So if, we, if I pass the mask through, then we can see the white on black and main mask there. So you could use this for kind of like any effects that you wanted. So it is animated. You don't have to use it animated though. Uh, if you go into the node group, there'll be a driver in there controlling the animation. As well as that, I thought that since people liked the look of the volume effects, which I put on Twitter and Instagram, I can actually show you this if I close the general display collection and open the volume display. And then if I set that to be the main camera, click on this object and then choose these material outputs. Um, so I've now turned these presets using some of these other nodes in the collection to create this new volumetric effect. So this one's called the cloud volume and I've got a holographic volume here, which I kind of like the look of. It seems like kind of we've got these different uh, layers kind of stacked up against each other and it's all just a volume effect. So I thought it would be nice to make these presets so people could experiment with these and modify them to make cool effects as well. And what else do we have? If I go back to the general display, we have some new basic patterns for like material building. Uh, let's choose that. There we go, material output. So these ones are just the Voronoi family. So there are like lots of different effects that people would tend to make using the different combinations of Voronoi effects. And so I just thought, let's just simplify that by making nodes for like the different types of effects people usually use it for. So we've got Salt Lake because it's kind of kind of reminds me of like those um, those dry salt beds, like at the bottom of uh, lakes and deserts and stuff. And you can adjust the thickness of that. So there's different values to control that procedurally. And then we have like this leafy one because it looks a bit like leaves. Then we have dots. There's actually quite a bit of control you can get with these. So if I zoom in on the surface there and increase the size, maybe not that much. Then we can increase the steps value and you can see that we're going to essentially get like a stepped gradient going. So you might find this interesting for, I don't know, all kinds of like stylized or tune like effects. So I thought that was a pretty interesting one. And then we also have the stars as well. So you can get like a starry effect there. So these will be handy for like all different kinds of material surface effects. And that's basically where we are at the moment. So there's a bunch of interesting new stuff that's been added here compared to like the old versions. I will say though, since you're on the second channel, the price of the procedural patterns pack will increase when this update goes live. So if you want to get it at a cheaper price, now would be the time. Like I haven't told anyone on the main channel that yet, but you know, that's basically going to be the case for like pretty much all of the products. So yeah, I thought it'd just be interesting to give you like a little update on what we've been working on today. And because it's Friday and I don't really release videos on the weekends, I will try and get something done for Monday, but we'll see how that goes. But it means I've got a bit more time over the weekend to kind of work on some more like presets and effects and stuff. So we'll see what we can do. I might actually try and make like a nice demonstration material using the rain shader because I have a feeling this is going to be a really useful one. Maybe some kind of glass effect I'll try we'll see but yes oh yeah and then like I mentioned in the previous video there's also like template brick materials so I'll need to demonstrate those as well anyway yeah just thought I'd give you like a little preview of what's going on and what's coming just trying to think of a few other things I can show you while we're here so this file I've kind of set it up so like the major categories of all of these like different node groups have an associated render collection so you see there's general display full material blob display these are for like doing uh, thumbnails and stuff like for the Gumroad like storefront. And then there's the wall display. This one's for showing off like the brick and tile effects on like a slanted wall. So it's just a nice way to display things. And then I have the volume display for like demonstrating the volume cubes. I quite like this checker pattern, which I've got going in the background. I mentioned that in the last video as well. Um, I like just being able to like switch on and off these different light catches. Uh, I think that's pretty nice. And, you know, I guess there's utility that other people could take this blend file once they've picked up the package. And I guess a 
adapt this to be their own startup file if they also like the way that I've been displaying things on the screen. But in putting together like these new effects, um, like experimenting with the volume stuff has been super interesting. Like I didn't think I'd be able to get these kinds of effects and I really want to go further with this. I've got some all, all kinds of ideas for like, I want to try it like an ionization engine. Have you ever seen like those kind of NASA experiments? I think where like you get this kind of like energized gradient coming off of like an engine. I want to try something like that with the volumes. But yeah, it's like an interesting field of study. I used to do volume stuff for like the Nebula experiments. I remember like Leb Alexander or Brent Patterson and a bunch of other people on Twitter. Like we would all be doing like these different experiments with Nebula stuff. And so I guess it kind of fits into the same vein. But a lot of that was with Eevee and Eevee has, you know, a lot of limitations when it comes to doing volumetric renderings. So for example, if I show you this exact node group in Eevee, you might need to let it calculate. That's um, definitely nowhere near as interesting. It's a bit depressing to look at. But of course, there are extra values for the volumetrics. So I think my head is probably in the way. Um, so you can see where we've got the tile size. If we put it down to two, which is the maximum, that's still, I mean, it looks interesting. If you like went up inside, you could get some cool motion graphics -y effects, I guess, but just still nowhere near as good. So this is where like the power of a path trace engine like Cycles really shines. But anyway, like procedural patterns wasn't even supposed to be about volumes. I just found some of these cool effects by happy accident. And it's um, it's also a lot better like visualizing them with the standard view transform for the color properties, because if we're doing it with Filmic, you know, it's a lot drier, nowhere near as vibrant and just not as interesting. So I tend to swap between these different color spaces when like working on the different types of materials and patterns. So yeah, hopefully you found this interesting. I'm going to try and continue doing some work on it now before the end of the day. I think on the last video, Machine left a comment saying that they had trouble finding it on Gumroad. But if you go through my website, you'll be able to basically get a direct link to where the product is on Gumroad. But it is also available on Blender Market as well, I believe. So on the main channel, we do that thing where at the end of a video, I give you an emoji to put at the end to kind of say who's made it this far. But well, we don't always do that on this channel. However, I was thinking maybe I could set like, I'll let you know an emoji which you can put in the comments for like any video that I make. And I will know that that's the emoji which indicates that you've made it to the end, even if I don't set one. And conveniently, there is an emoji called end. It's basically like a back arrow and it says end. So maybe that could be like our emergency substitute emoji. So that's a little secret between us. If I don't tell you an emoji for a video, just use that end emoji and that will let me know. So yeah, big thanks to Charon for the rain shader. I should get on with doing some more experiments with this. Thank you and goodbye.